Well guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in and I'm very happy that you guys tune in because without you guys there is no tuning in. Thank you for coming to the channel. I appreciate every single one of you. Bad comments, good comments, your comments, comments. Today, we look at the Aurorus B550 Elite Motherboard. Just an overview look, and uh, I guess I'll show it running and, and lit up. So for now, let's open this box up, take a look at what we got, and go from there. It's wearing a crown? Great boards at great pricing. Um, I will put it at the bottom here and I will put an affiliate link if you're looking for this board. Um, but anyway, uh, without further ado, let's just take a quick look at the box. I know most of the Aurora's boxes look identical and this one's no exception as it doesn't even have the puff out letters. All of the wonderful uh, stuff here in this unit. So uh, this is your third gen and up support motherboard. I'm not going to say that it works on something older or not because I'm not going to be testing that at all today. Um, but this does have the two and a half gigabit LAN, which I find really odd because 90% of the X570s just have a gigabit. And almost all the B550s from Aurora's have two and a half. I have no idea why. But that's what it is. ALC 1200 audio. And we'll go over the board and where everything is and placements after. I'm just going to let you know what's, you know, key features. Of course, it has a Q flash. I believe these are dual bias. They should be. Um, very, very nice caps. We'll see that when we get in there. Um, you can run their software. And, and, and I'm not a big fan of Aurora's engine. I do like the AMD software. So I pretty much just use the AMD software, make sure all my drivers are up to date and control everything from there. Um, Fusion 2.0 you will install if you wanna do lighting. So that's a different thing all together. And of course, I always talk about how good their uh, MOSFET and their uh, thermo designs are. So let's get this thing open and uh, see what it really looks like. What do I think of it? Okay, before we get to the motherboard, we have your standard gigabyte uh, motherboard header connector. So you just put all of your case hookups in here that plug into the motherboard and you don't even have to know how it goes. It just goes one way after that. These things, I wish, I gotta figure out a way to buy these. I've lost some over time and I think they're just great. They're just absolutely great. Your SATA cables, there's two, one with an L shape and ones that are going to be like close to the panel or glass and then you're straight through. Again, nothing major in this one. Oh, that's cool though. It does come with a aluminum Aurorus metal sticker. I love those. One day I actually got to try and use one. The CD-ROM that no one ever uses anymore because if you just, when you're doing a little trick, of course, when you're installing uh, Windows 10 or 11 on your unit, um, a lot of people forget to go to uh, Windows Updates, but under Windows Updates, you're going to see driver optional updates. Go there and download them all. Even if it's a bias, it'll just do everything for you. And I think that's pretty cool. I don't believe with this type of machine you'll get the bias as a clone, but I know with brand names like Lenovo, HP, you will get the bias and uh, and be able to reboot the computer and the computer does everything for you. And because it's an Aurora's product, you still get a manual and that is something that actually makes me happy. I don't have to go look it up. Pretty normal loadout, I mean, or layout, I should say. Um, you have your NVMe here, an NVMe here, or N.2. I do not believe that M.2 will work in this one. It would only work in this one. If I'm correct, I think this is only NVMe. It won't recognize uh, M.2 in here. And that's been going on since like the last end of uh, B450s and so on. I, I have always seen that issue come up time and time again. If I want to get rid of an older M.2, I cannot 
unless I put it here as a data drive. Um, oh, this will be fun. <laughs> There's nothing better than Peely Peely. I did it. Oh, it was satisfying and unsatisfying. There wasn't enough there. Off the hop, we are greeted with, of course, your 24 pin, two SATAs here and two SATAs. So you have four SATAs on here. Um, if you're like me, you don't use them much anymore. You just pretty much use the NVMEs. That's it. In a board like this, where it only has two and not three, which would be like the Ultra or, or Master or whatever going forward. Um, maybe even a pro i'm not sure but because there's two what i would do in this case if it was mine and i was building it as a gaming machine i would put a 512 here and maybe a two terabyte or a one terabyte here for my gaming and kind of have an external drive just for the other stuff i don't do as much with so that's how i do it just to keep a cleaner install um, actually though, this board will be going into a gaming computer with an install and I will be using some SATA connectors as this customer has some, uh, hard, uh, drives, like uh, hard physical drives in his machine, but we are going to be putting a, an NVMe in here. Um, I'm not going to really show that build. I will show it built and running to show you the lighting, of course, just showing you guys a quick update here to see some lighting on the board uh, you'll see that the board lights up there in there and you know covered mostly by the video card and up in here of course we want red accent a bit of this white four slots okay DDR4 so you got four slots um, this one here of course right here you're gonna have uh, your uh, header for CPU fan. So usually the gray one, it's gray for a reason. And that's because the, the bias will see your RPM and everything. And you kind of need to be putting it in the right spot. So that is your ex, ex, like a extra or motherboard or uh, let's say water pump fan. These two are your dedicated that point of view for your CPU. There's another fan header right here. And you have an eight phase uh, plug-in right here. Your 24 here, all solid caps and uh, diodes, everything on this. This is one of those, I mean, this is this day and age. So uh, it's no need to really talk about that. Beefy cooler on your South bridge, um, which is really nice to see. It also looks really good. I like how the, the Eagle's always embedded into it. Um, you have three PCIe. Uh, one mini you do have amp up audio now you don't get the fancy shroud and all that stuff on this board but you do get high-end capacitance so I, I'm very happy with that um, I, I think once you go to the gigabyte line not Aurora's you might see changes here I haven't bought one of the gigabyte boards in a long time maybe I should just to do like maybe a gigabyte gaming or something to try that one out and here we are greeted with your audio, digital ARGB. This is your normal RGB. This little plug right here, I believe, is to add different lighting as well. I think uh, it used to come, I'm not sure, this one didn't come with the adapter, but uh, some do. Uh, another fan, so now we have four fan headers that I know of. Um, and we have your TPM plug-in, which you also know that AMD has that in their CPU. Two USB 2.0s. USB 3 and there's your header which I said before that adapter plugs into and you are laughing it just boop and you don't even need to know how or what way it goes the header has everything labeled to plug your connectors into which is pretty sweet and of course your your brackets for your fan depending on what it is normally these come off and your socket Nicely done MOSFETs, nicely done cooling system. It's pretty thick aluminum. It's what I expect from a brand like this. It's what I expect from any brand that's building a gaming rig today and high-end caps. Nothing to write home about. It's not going to be anything uh, fancy. It's just going to look like a normal board on the back. And now we're going to go to the header that everybody's waiting for on this one. And here we go. So now we're looking at a non- wireless motherboard 
And and this is how I like them to begin with, but the higher end boards have Wi-Fi on it or not. I just disable it. But anyway, you get two USB 2.0s here, display port, HDMI. Remember, these are only going to work with G processors. Then we have uh, your 3.2s. You have six of those. And this white one here would be your uh flash so if you need to flash the bias but the machine ain't working or whatever you can actually just press this button put a usb drive in here with the software from gigabyte on it and boom um two and a half gig ethernet and of course your surround sound audio with fiber optic and that is nice that's a nice touch to see on the board of this level so i'm happy to see that because we're seeing a lot less good audio on motherboards moving forward. Okay, another quick thing just to bring up and we'll see this when it powers up. This is more like your blackout edition. Like someone who's not really big on ARGB or RGB, but would use it. There's RGB in here or yeah, it'll be RGB. I don't think ARGB is controlled in here and along here. Other than that, oh, and sorry, and along here. So you see these little white strips that is a RGB light. Kind of cool. Aurora has been doing that for a long time. And yeah, I was, you know, don't fail to put something up in here. So there we go with that. That's all the lighting that's on this board. I don't even think there's any lighting underneath here. So, you know, that is what I call the blackout board. VRM is a 12 plus two uh, digital VRM. So it's, it's again, what I expected. Um, the thermo design, everything, you can even see some of the pads right here. They're squat, so that's a good thing. <laughs> if they weren't squat, <laughs> they wouldn't be touching. And again, like I said, it is ALC uh, 1200 audio. I just wanted to uh, put a touch on that. Just to make another thing clear, guys, this is your PCIe 4 and this is your PCIe 16 lane right here, which actually is easily seen because it's got the aluminum shell on it for durability. Um, and that is the one you would uh, use. Now, this is a PCIe 4.0 motherboard, so you are getting the benefits of that. Okay, guys, one thing I always leave out when I do the overview type reviews for these motherboards is I forget and I fail to mention, of course, this is an ATX board. And the dimensions on this board is 305 by 244 millimeters. So if you're looking to know what that does for you, like a lot of people buy a board and they're like, uh-oh, my case only takes from here up. So that, that is the key here. You've got to look at 305 by 244. So 305, 244 millimeters, and uh, that's the size of your board. You can always check that way if your case is going to support it or whether you're going to get yourself a new case and you're going to make sure it's an ATX case. If the case is ATX, this board will fit. It is not an EATX giving it an extension. So no worries there really. But anyway, guys, I hope that I've done enough here to let you guys know when it comes down to buying this board, what to expect. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always ask the Game Hunter and I will gladly answer anything that I can answer to the best of my knowledge. Till next time, guys, thank you for watching, game over.